uh, of a certain in a certain time, the PTO staff will use the same values. If I choose the immediate stop, in this actually is all, should only be used in emergency cases. In emergency cases, if we want to stop the the movement immediately, without uh, without taking into account the uh, any consequences, we we choose the immediate stop. Now, in stepper motors, immediate stop it's it's not a a real um, it's not a real thing because immediate stop cannot be performed with a uh, stepper motor. Once you stop, once you stop giving it entering pulses, it will still, it will continue to move. So this is very, this is a very delicate decision to make uh, to the stop uh, model. Again, I will need to create a condition for the stop. I will then I will later connect this condition to a button on the PLC. In order to monitor our movement, I will want to use the read status profile, read status model. I will place it here, choose the channel, and I will choose all these operands for the data. Now this model can be connected directly to the rail because we want to get the information all the time. We can, of course, use a different condition. You can use a condition to set the, the read status model only when the movement has started. But uh, I will, for now, leave it connected to the rail. Now, I will go to the HMI and create a few buttons. First button will be for the movement to start to initiate the move. I have will have to connect it to the memory bit I chose before. And I will create another button, second button. For the stop. Again, I will have to, I need to connect it to the appropriate memory bit that I set before to the to as a condition to the model stop. So I have two buttons, but I will also want to observe the movement, to monitor the movement on the PLC HMI. So I will take a numeric, well, numeric variable And I will link it to the read status function that we set before. Let's see here. We have the current position. Oh, 
might be the difference. Current velocity. Here it is a double word operand. And that is everything we need to configure. Now, when I start the movement, I will see the velocity here. Let's also see the position of the movement. I'm choosing now the appropriate operand from the read status module that I said before. Here, that is all we need to create a, a movement and to monitor it in a in the simplest the simplest way to perform this. Now all I have to do is to download it to our PLC and let's see what happens. One second, we are just changing the computer to be able to uh, download the application to the PLC. Okay. 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 You hear me? Okay. Now I've changed computers, and on this computer I have uh, an application that I uh, created earlier, which contains, uh, which is, which is uh, just more uh, advanced, and it's uh, more attractive to see. What I'm using here is the PTO configuration, the PTO set, set profile as before, but here I am also using the set home, and I have two movements. So this is just a, a just a little more advanced, a little more advanced uh, PTO example. I have downloaded it to the to the controller, and let's see how it looks. Okay, so this is how it looks. I created two buttons for two, two movements, and here we can set the velocity for both movements and the position for both movements. This is the window, the field where we see the current position that I take from the read status uh, model. If I click on settings, I see I can see that yes. I go into the settings. I am setting the profile of the movement, which I will not uh, change at the moment. But I can I can uh, change the profile from the letter or from the HMI or even from the HMI. I can change the profile and control the movement this way. 
let's go back. Okay, I would like to show you how it looks. This is a this is a ruler, yes, that uh, is connected to a PLC, which has the PLC has on it the application I create I just uh, showed you on the video. This is the ruler. I will leave this here and let's see how it works. This is the controller that is controlling the roller. I will click on the first button and I, as you can see, the roller has moved. Now I will change directions you will see that changing directions controls the position. When you, when you are, when you enter a negative position, negative position means that uh, the motor should move in the opposite direction. If I click on the second movement, I will see that the velocity was much slower because this is set to 1000 pulses and the second or the first movement is set to 2,000 pulses. That's the difference. This is 2,000 pulses for, uh, for a um, length of 5,000 5, and this is a slower, slower uh, velocity movement. Okay, so this is how you control the PTO, and now I would like to know if you have any more any questions. If any, if uh, everybody understood everything and are ready to use the PTO from now on. Okay, can you hear me and keep answering the questions? I was uh, I was Yair, I was uh, your presenter today. Uh, okay, the same Hello. Hello. Hello, I hope you uh, hear me. So there are some questions. I want to thank uh, especially to Yair for this uh, good presentation. I hope you liked it. And this is a very interesting function, really, which opens a uh, lot of uh, room for uh, interesting application, things that uh, previously was not possible at all, or was possible, limited, and with uh, just uh, making a large code in uh, uh, logic. Now this is much, much, uh, uh, much uh, uh, better. Now I have here some question. I will try uh, to uh, ask for. I have a question from Mark uh, uh, 